just looking at some of the early results from the UK's four day week trial, um, one of the interesting results on that was that if you want to optimize your hours and go down to a four day week, meetings are one of the principal things you need to tackle because they're a time vampire. They, they mm. eat a lot of our time. Um, and I think it's very easy to mistake activity for productivity in this space. But, you know, having back to back meetings for the entire day means that I'm talking about work rather than doing work. Yeah. And we know actually with complex, particularly, um, you know, uh, knowledge work, um, you need brain space. Um, you need that deep working environment. Um, you need time to to sort of step back and say, OK, I just need to switch everything off. I don't want to talk to anyone. Um, I just need to think about this to 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 read, to write, to think. And I think that's that's one of the discussions. Certainly, again, coming out the, the some of the stuff that has been done before with purely remote organisations um, is that they don't tend to have they have windows of meeting opportunities rather than necessarily the whole day. Mm. So they try and preserve a few hours, maybe in the morning and the afternoon, that are meeting free, and mm. preserve the meetings in the middle of the day. Which then means you have to think about well, what what's what's valuable to have a meeting for? Um, mm. Why should I come together synchronously? And actually, could a lot of the stuff that we do synchronously, maybe needlessly, um, can be done asynchronously using chat, using messaging, using shared you know, um, spaces, um, uh, rather than coming together to chat about things all the time. Um, so I think that that's an interesting one around how do we change the dynamics of, of how we collaborate, cooperate and synchronize work. 